Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, today we're going to be doing a foundation 101 contour and concealer tutorial. Well, first we're going to talk about it and then I'll show you how to apply everything. Um, so let's begin. <laughs> um, I made some notes. So if I'm looking down here, that's because I don't want to forget to tell y'all anything. So let's talk about coverage first. Um, coverage is, you know, how much of your skin you can see underneath the foundation or with the foundation on. So you got lightest, you know, lightest coverage all the way down to fullest. So your lightest coverage would be like your tinted moisturizer. Then it would go to um, your BB and CC creams. Then your powder foundation, then liquid, and then stick foundation. So um, tinted moisturizer, and there is an exception to the, to you know every coverage rule. There's going to be an exception um, for the tinted moisturizer. It's going to be the it cosmetics. Um, they are very full coverage. Um, I feel like their CC cream isn't as full coverage as the tinted moisturizer, but it's a really good product. Um, so. The tinted moisturizer, basically it's moisturizer with tint. So it's good for if you have dry skin or if you just want something really lightweight to put on just to go to the grocery store, um, go out during the summer because it's not going to really like sweat off or feel like you have a lot of makeup on. It's a really good, comfortable option. Um, next is this BB and CC creams. Um, so the difference between BB and CC, BB has skincare properties in it. That's it. That's the only difference. <laughs> um, so BB creams are really popular over with like the key beauty people um, because it's healthy for your skin. Um, because it's got, you know, a serum in it. It's got SPF. It's got, you know, something skincare related in it. Um, I haven't had a whole lot, a whole lot of luck <laughs> with BB or CC creams. Um, I've tried the It Cosmetics one and it might just be their shade range because their shade range is really dark, but I didn't really like them very much and I felt like it got a little oily on me during the day. Um, so next would be powder foundation and I haven't tried powder foundation um, because it's good for people with really really oily skin and my skin used to be oily but that was before I really knew about makeup and knew what to do and how to treat my skin um, because I wasn't doing moisturizer I know <laughs> I thought because my skin was oily that I didn't need moisturizer but it's kind of the opposite and like my skin was overproducing because I wasn't giving it the moisture that it needed. So it was like freaking out and giving my face too much oil just to kind of like try to balance it out. Um, so liquid is what no like normally people think of when they think of foundation. Um, it's your, you know, pump, it's your tube, it's just regular liquid and within liquid foundation those two can vary from you know minimal coverage to full coverage as well just kind of really depends on on what you're looking for um, next would be stick and I have tried stick foundation um, it is very very full coverage <laughs> when you watch like RuPaul's Drag Race and they're using stick foundation that's, that's, yeah, pretty good representation of stick foundation. Um, it can be easy because it's just a stick. You just swipe it on and blend it out. So that's pretty cool. I've only tried the Dubious Place one. Um, it kind of like broke up on my skin during the day. So I don't know if that was like a primer problem or didn't like my skincare. You know, I don't know if it was a problem actually with the formula or if it just didn't work with what products I already had on my skin. So then now, oops, 
Now we're going to talk about, uh, well, I'll show a few of my favorites from like each little section. So we already talked about the It Cosmetics um, Tinted Moisturizer. As you can see, it's not my color. <laughs> um, it's my color during the summer, sometimes. Sometimes I tan, sometimes I don't. It's just what my skin decides to do that day. <laughs> um, I really like it because it's lightweight, even though it is full coverage. It doesn't feel like you have a whole lot on you. Plus, it's SPF 50, which is like, I think, the highest of any foundation out there right now. It's awesome. And they just came out with an oil-free matte one that has a little bit more shade range. So I think I'm going to try that one next. And we'll see. I don't know. All right, so I guess like drugstore, my favorite has always been L'Oreal Infallible. I like the Pro Matte, the original one. I've tried the Dewy one. It smells like baby wipes. I don't like it. <laughs> it gets greasy. It breaks up. This one is tried and true. It has always worked for me. It's full coverage. It doesn't feel like a whole lot on your face. I I love it. And it's only seven bucks for this guy. Of course I'm the lightest shade, but that's normal <laughs> for me. Um I've also tried their total cover 24 hour one. And this one's good. I don't like the consistency as much as the um the original, I guess is what you would call it. The original one. Um, but it still does feel really nice. It's really full coverage. This one's not super matte or super dewy, so it could work for, you know, dry or oily skin. Really good. And then, well, this is another good drugstore one. Um, Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I really like this one, even though it has the baby wipe smell to it. <laughs> it's, um, not full coverage. It's buildable, though, and it's got this cool doe foot applicator which is really nice and easy you get a lot of product for i think it's eight dollars maybe eleven i can't remember off the top of my head um but this one has a really good shade range too which is why i like it because it has your cool tones and warm tones but it also has neutrals which neutral is what i am so it's hard to find neutral usually things go too warm on me or make me look super pale and ghostly, <laughs> which I am pale, but I'm not like ghostly pale. Um, so I really like this one a lot. Um, it's a good, good formula. As far as like pro ones go, um, this one is a really good buildable one. It's the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. It's like, um, drops. It's very, very liquidy. So I use this with like a foundation brush. Um, to get the best application, <laughs> uh, it's it's awesome because it drops. It doesn't feel like you have anything on, but it's buildable so that you can cover you know redness like I have. You can cover dark spots, that kind of deal. Plus, it's bare mineral, so it's good for your skin, which is awesome. The one that I've been using pretty much every day now um, is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. I like this one. Hate the bottle that it's in. Hate the pump. <laughs> the pump um, pumps down, but you have to pull it back up every time. So it's really stupid <laughs> and frustrating. Um, but it's a good formula. Um, because it's a luminous one, it's like my T-zone gets oily. Um, so this one will get a little oily in my T-zone if I don't set it properly. Um, which we'll go over setting in a second. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it could get a little oily, um, but it's really pretty. It's not sparkly luminous. It's just kind of like natural dewy. You'll see. I'll put this one on for the video. Um, I think that's all the ones that I really want to mention right now. There are plenty of ones that I've tried and didn't like at all. <laughs> Um, so now let's go over how to match, how to pick a good foundation for you, how to pick it for your skin tone. Um, so the 
everyone has undertones to their skin, right? You're either cool, warm, neutral, or olive toned. So the easiest way to find that out, I get a blank piece of paper here, is hold up a white piece of paper to your skin. If your skin, in comparison to the white paper, looks like pinkish, um, let me refer to my notes. <laughs> if it looks like pink, bluish, or green, um, you've got cool undertones. If it looks yellow, gold, or like peachy, kind of like mine, um, you've got warm. If you've got a mixture of both, then you're neutral. So mine, like you can see, um, it looks a little pinky, it looks a little peachy. <laughs> Some parts look a little yellow, so that's why I am neutral. Um, olive tones, you have like a green or yellow base to it. Um, <clears throat> normally that's a super warm skin tone. Um, so cool doesn't always mean that you are fair skinned. Warm doesn't always mean that you're dark skinned. It's all about your undertones. And there's something online about looking at your veins and seeing what color your veins look, but easiest way, hold up a piece of paper. <laughs> and just see what you look like compared to that paper. Um, so as far as picking like your coverage and what type of foundation, it all depends on what you personally want your foundation to look like. So if you're like me, you have a lot of redness, I like full coverage. Um, sometimes, like, sometimes I have good days and it's not quite as red, um, and I'll go for like that bare skin one, where it's like medium coverage. But normally, I like full coverage. So it kind of just depends on your skin, what you want to feel like. Full coverage doesn't always mean that you're going to have cake face or um, that you're going to feel the foundation on your skin. It all depends on the specific foundation that you pick. Like, you know, this is full coverage. I feel it a little on my skin, but it's not cake face. You know, whereas this one was more medium coverage. Um, I, I, yeah, I feel it a little bit on my face. It's not cake face, but you can feel it. It doesn't quite sink in as much as the others. So I can't really tell you, you know, go pick this one, go pick that one. It really is just a personal choice. Um, always do your research on products. Don't always go with what everybody is hyping up at the moment because it doesn't usually work for everyone. Um, especially with the shade ranges. I mean, shade ranges are getting better now, which is good. They should be um, to be more inclusive, but you know, like everybody was crazy over the um, benefit. Hello, happy, happy something with a smiley face on it. But it was like 10 shades. <laughs> so it wouldn't even work for me. It definitely wouldn't work for most people out there. It's, you know, it was overhyped and meh. You can skip it. So speaking about like the redness and stuff, um, a lot of people color correct. I don't because I use full coverage, but if I were to use like the Bare Minerals one every day, I might, I might, you know, just to kind of cover up some of that redness. <laughs> um, so color correcting, you always want to choose the opposite color on the color wheel, which I wish I had my color wheel to show y'all right now because that would be perfect, but I'll just tell you. You'll just have to believe me. <laughs> so green cancels out red. Um, lavender will cancel out yellow and kind of brightens a little bit. And then coral is really good for dark circles, um, hiding the, kind of that blue tone to your skin. So if you were to color correct, you would pick a concealer or a color corrector. They're same thing. <laughs> um, sometimes the color correctors are just like a cream but I like the ones that are more concealer texture because it's actually gonna like cover. It's gonna do something like it's supposed to. 
Um, so you would pick that and you'd put that on before you put on your foundation, before you put on um, your concealer. That would be your first, well, I guess technically second step after your primer. So you would just put that in the spots where you have your redness, you have your dark circles, and you just want to put a little bit because a little goes a long way. Um, I don't need, I wouldn't need green all over the side of my face. <laughs> I don't need to cover up the whole side of my face with green if I don't have red everywhere. I have redness right here and like here. Everywhere else is fine, like it looks a little red, but that's going to be covered with foundation. What you want to cover is the darkest parts of those colors. So like if I had really dark circles, like I would cover, you know, starting in here, blend out. That kind of deal. Uh, let's see, what's next? Um, yeah, let's do setting powder. So, setting powder isn't for everyone. Everyone doesn't need it. Um, basically, like me, for me, like my T-zone gets oily. And I touch my chin a lot. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to because of the whole pandemic thing, but I still do. I need like a cone or something. Um, so, what was I saying? Oh, so all I do with my setting powder is set like my under eye, T zone, and my chin. I leave all of this alone because I don't want powder, like a powdery look. Just not for me. And I don't need, like, the more powder you put on, the more you're going to feel it, you know? And so I don't, I don't want to feel that everywhere. Um, I use a translucent powder. It's good for most skin tones. Um, if your skin tone is more rich, dark, sometimes the translucent can make it look a little ashy. So they do make colored powders, so, like colored setting powders. Um, I'm trying to think of what. Ooh, um, Beauty Bakery has some really good ones. I use them on a few clients. Um, at the store and they make their skin feel really like velvety <laughs> really nice um, and they come in a good shade range for those uh, a little setting powder goes a long way you don't need globs and globs and globs no baking you don't need to bake unless you're going on a movie set <laughs> or it's your wedding day or I don't know, you're wearing your makeup for 24 hours. You don't need to bake. It's it's an Instagram thing. <laughs> you don't need it. You just need a little bit of powder just to set it. And that's it. No baking. Um, I think that's all so far about chatting. So... Now I will show y'all how to apply stuff. So let's get this hair out of my face. Do y'all like the hair? It's kind of cool. I woke up this morning and forgot that I did it. <laughs> and kind of um, scared myself in the mirror. So that was fun. So we're going to do this guy. But then, because, you know, it's the end of the world, and what's a better time to wear a tiara than the end of the world? And this one was made by Shauna Aubrey at Freya's Fire Custom Artworks. It's a rainbow. It's gorgeous. I love it. Never get to wear it. But now I am, because why not? All right, so we're going to go in primer first. Um, there's a lot of people who don't believe in primer. They don't like primer. It doesn't work for them. Whatever. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I don't know that I'm totally sold on it yet. Um, I've only found maybe one or two that I like. But it's like, eh, I can do without it. Eh, you know? Um... Right now I'm using the Milk Hydro Primer. This one is a good, like, tacky base. So it does hold your makeup on for longer, I feel. Um, I feel like it doesn't really do the whole, like, pore minimizing, 
you know, smooth surface thing, but it is grippy. So, I mean, it, it's got its benefits to it. So I'm just gonna do about one and a half pumps of that. I'm gonna dot it around. And then whenever you rub products in, and I have a mirror right here, so if I look that way, that's why. Um, you never wanna drag your face down, because that's gonna make wrinkles over time. You always want to go up, up and out. All right. Once that, you can kind of see that it's, <laughs> it's a little tacky. Um, sorry, I'm going to rub my hands off. Some people like that to set. Oh, let me go backwards, actually. So before you do your foundation, your primer, everything, you need to do your skincare. And I usually like to let mine set for about 10, 15 minutes before I do my makeup because that's really going to make sure that it gets into your skin. So what I use is the Peach and Lily Glass Refining Serum. Love this stuff. This stuff is like I, I can... I see why it's a number one for K-Beauty. It's awesome. <laughs> it's got the polypeptides in it. It's got um, peach extract. So it's good at making my skin look more youthful, kind of more plump, glowy, without looking oily. Glowy and oily are different. We don't want oily, we want glowy. <laughs> um, then I've fallen in love with this moisturizer for K-Beauty ultra repair moisturizer <laughs> it's good for sensitive skin it's good at being really moisturizing without getting oily um and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin like it feels very liquidy but it's still a cream if that makes sense <laughs> it's a really nice consistency and then i also will use Sometimes, not every time. I'll use um, Facial Spray by Mario Badescu. I like the rose water one and the lavender one. Um, I usually use the lavender one with my nighttime routine because it's it's lavender. It's good about making you sleepy and make you comfortable and that kind of jazz. Um, the rose water one is good for redness. Like rose in general is really good for redness and inflammation. Okay, now we went over that. <laughs> now we can go back to primer. So once your primer gets a little sticky, now we can go in with foundation. Um, I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram where they just squirt it on their face. That's not good because they're using like a pump here, one pump, one pump, one pump, when really for your whole face, you just probably need a pump and a half. <laughs> They're using way too much product. They're being wasteful. You don't need that much. So what I do, because if you put it on your fingers, your fingers will absorb it and that's wasteful too. If you put it directly on your beauty blender, your beauty blender absorbs it and that's wasteful. So I'm gonna use a brush. I like using the little flat brush and then I'm just gonna squirt it on there pull this back up and then you just kind of put it. I had to tape the handle back on because it fell off this morning. So that, now you can see I need a little bit more. So just going to do another half pump. And we're just dotting it around. Make sure you get to where you're going to be able to blend it. I don't put any directly on my nose because um, I feel like if I put like a dot right on my nose it's too much product for my nose and then it like rubs off during the day or it looks like unblended and gross. So I just do my nose last. Let me tuck this back here because it's being annoying. So now I'm going to take my beauty blender. I already dampened it. Um, 
probably 10 minutes. Well, no, I've been talking for 25. <laughs> so probably 30 minutes ago now. Um, cool water, because that helps close your pores. Um, you don't want it to be drippy. It's not drippy. It's just bouncy. Um, it's going to expand a little bit. This one is not a beauty blender. It's real techniques because I don't want to spend $20 on a sponge. I'm going to spend seven. So you can take whatever side is comfortable for you. And then you just bounce it like you're pressing it into your skin. <clears throat> You don't want to swipe because this is a sponge. If you swipe, it is going to wipe off that makeup and you want to go into your hairline because you don't want a line there. And this is a no particular order or whatever, it doesn't make sense to anyone <laughs> but me with how I do it. It doesn't matter as long as you get it all blended and don't forget in between your eyebrows, out here, and then blend down your neck. because we don't want to look like we're wearing a mask. Oh, going back to that. So when you match, don't match your hand. Don't match to your chest. You want to match here. I match every single person coming in the store to their jaw. Well, jaw and neckline. Because that will prevent you from looking like you have a mask on. Because most people's hands darker than their face because that's going to see the sun more often. Um, most people's chests are darker than their face, you know. It just makes sense to, to match right here because that's what you're going to see the difference in if you don't. So you can see there's some good coverage there. I'm just gonna go back over that. So because this one is not full coverage right out of the jar, um, I'm gonna get some more. So you can still kind of see some of my redness. So I'm gonna do with the rest of that half pump and just do right there. You're not going to, like, I guess I could use this to spread it all over my face, but this isn't going to blend it. It's just going to spread it on my face. So you really need something that's going to blend it. So I'll show you here in a second the different tools. the beauty blender isn't for everyone either. Okay, what's going on right there? There we go. Some of the uh, primer, it looked like I just bunched up there, which happens. That's what fingers are for. Okay, so you also don't want to go, like you don't want to be blending for 10 minutes with this because it's just gonna soak up all that product that you put on your face. So step, <laughs> once you get a good coverage that you like. And then, let me show you. So if I, some foundations work really, really well, like I was saying with that Bare Minerals one earlier, with a brush. So, thick, it's a little dirty. Um, dense brush. It's really good because you can drop that foundation right on there, drop it in, and you push it into your skin instead of rubbing it on there, swiping it, push it, and that's going to look a whole lot better. You're not going to get streaks. Um, 
going to get good coverage. You're not going to miss anything. After you do this and you get it all over, you can totally like go and blend your edges if you want with this guy. Works good. Um, but like not every foundation is going to be good with this. Like that one that I just used would probably be really streaky and I guess it would yeah it would probably lose some coverage with this guy but the big thing with the beauty blender is this makes your foundation feel and look like your skin because it's pushing it into your skin and it's damp um, kind of molds it to your face texture texture yeah that works face texture so that's why I like the Beauty Blender because it makes your foundation feel more comfortable more wearable so now we're gonna go to concealer I don't have any others that I set out besides well no I have this one okay so I like this guy these are all creams cream concealer um, and cream contour so this one's really good because it these are not full coverage um, these are really good about or good for <laughs> using on days where you want to look more natural so not like full glam days or full face days just running out these are really good um, the cream contour is really nice because it's easy to blend stays where you want it to be because it's cream um what was I going to say I was going to say something else I don't know this one's really good I use this on all of my makeup clients for my freelance stuff um the one that I use on myself right now is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye I so much. <laughs> I've had it probably six months, um, halfway through. So I'd say that's pretty good. I like the like the Fit Me ones are good, um, but the Fit Me ones are not as. I keep saying this full coverage. <laughs> this one is full coverage. Um, I would say this one is very similar to the. Um, Tarte Shape Tape, but Tarte Shape Tape is dry. Um, creases, it creases. Uh, I don't like it <laughs> because it's dry. Like you don't, you don't want dry under eyes. That's that's not cute. So this one is really nice and moisturizing. Um, it doesn't settle in my creases. It's full coverage. It's easy to blend love it I, I cannot recommend this stuff enough and unlike their foundation they have a ton of colors for their concealer why they can't do the same for their foundation I don't know doesn't make sense to me but concealer it's the bomb so with this one because it's so full coverage you don't need a whole lot which is why it's lasted me this long what I do is use this little guy a uh, little, basically like a tiny version of that foundation brush that I used. And then we're going to squirt it on here. That's, I don't know if you can see that, that's all you need for both under eyes. So you put it here, here. That's it. And that is it. Some days when I don't wear foundation, I'll drag it down a little bit more. Like I'll kind of do like a whole like triangle thing <laughs> um, just to cover up that redness but you can see like a little goes a really long way you never want to do a semicircle under your eye because that's going to draw more attention to any bags under your eye any discoloration that kind of jazz So, 
Now for this concealer, and I feel for like most concealers, you want to let this set. You don't want to blend it out right away. <clears throat> because when it like heats up to your skin and it like, I don't know, settles in, gets used to your skin, warms up, it's much easier to blend out and I feel like you get better coverage with it that way. So what I usually do while this is setting is I do my eyebrows. So you'll get a little eyebrow tutorial <laughs> right now. Kind of. We'll see. Um, so I use the Benefit Brow products. I use several different colors. <laughs> I use the gray pencil. Then I use the number six. Well, I use the pomade first, the number three. Three? Yeah, three. And then I use the number six brow gel. So gray, number six, three. I feel like the combination looks good and it's more natural because your eyebrows, like your hair, are not all one solid color. So I always go in with the pencil first. It's really skinny, which is why I like it so much. Um, and I just create my shape that I want. So I just outline. Um, it took a while for my brows to grow back after, you know, middle school, <laughs> when you learn about brow care and yellow lip black, because that's what the style was back then. So you can see I just outlined, but I'm not going to outline all the way to the front because you don't want the front to be super dark. So I just, you can see, <laughs> um, your brows are never going to be twins, they're going to be sisters, um, unless you're like my sister and I who don't look alike at all. Um, they should be pretty similar. So I'm just building that arch. like I have hair there, but you can't really see it. I'm just dragging that out. Um, a good product to help you regrow your brows, and it's also good for lashes, is the Black Jamaican Castor Oil. Um, the only one I know about is Shea Moisture, but I'm sure there's more out there but Shea Moisture has like a thing probably about this big for like nine bucks so it's gonna last you a while which is awesome um, just put it on a spoolie for your lashes or a um, q-tip for your brows like at night just put it on there and it'll help them grow it has to be the black Jamaican castor oil because regular castor oil is too filtered so it doesn't have all the good stuff in it. So now I'm taking the pomade and just to fill in, drag that out a little bit. Um, because this pomade comes with a little brush, which is awesome. I feel like the brush gets a more precise tail and I'm just dragging it up. I don't know if you can see. You can use like the flat side, you can use the point, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to go back over just to blend the colors together. Go back over the edge. So one down. Always start with the product at the back of your brow and then work forward. 
so that you don't have globs and globs of product in the front. Um, there's like a whole formula of how your brows are supposed to go, you know, like the angle and all that jazz. They do it at the Benefit Brow Bar. I've watched them and it's pretty cool, but I feel like everybody likes their brows a little different. Um, you know, only you know what shape works best for you. If you would have showed me my brows how they are now, like 10 years ago, I probably would have freaked out. <laughs> but, oh my god, you know, they're, no, they're too big, like, they look crazy. What are you doing? But as they say, the brows are the drapes, curtains, to your face. They help shape them. So now I'm just doing the brow gel, and the brow gel does have some fibers and color to it. So it's going to help them look thick. Um, on my days off, when I just have to like go to the store, I usually just brush the brow gel through them. I don't do the whole shebang. So it's too much work. But, you know, still want to look like I did something. So now I'm going to take that concealer brush and just kind of like clean them up a little bit because like, they look a little weird. Um, so I'm just cleaning up that line. And I didn't put any extra product on here because I don't want it to look like I have like concealer under my brows. I just want it to look natural. Do you like this one? I got a little crazy with that angle there. bad. Usually brows look a little intense until you do everything. So I'm happy with that. So now that the concealer, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, um, has had time to warm up, you know, kind of get to our texture and take our beauty blender and I always take the little point and just blend that out. Um, and on days where I don't have eyeshadow, or I don't feel like putting eyeshadow on, I'll blend it over my lid too. Just because my eyelids are a little different color. <laughs> Same with the foundation, don't blend too much. And yes, I did poke myself in the eye. It happens, it's alright. You just really just want to push it into your skin, obviously without hurting yourself. <laughs> Every woman gets red right on the corners of their nose. It's a hormone thing. And that's it um, for concealer. So now we're going to take our setting powder. Um, as I mentioned before, I really like the Beauty Bakery one. I don't own that one. So that will be my next one that I purchase. Because <laughs> um, they, uh, they keep selling out of my color. Um, so I have the Laura Mercier translucent one. I like that one. Um, more drugstore one is the Airspun one. It's really good to smell like an old lady a little bit. But you know, it's kind of like a comforting smell. Like your grandma's there when you're putting on makeup. <laughs> Um, so for brushes for your setting powder, 
I usually use something like this. It's dense without being too dense. Does that make sense? Like it's still, you can move the bristles, still feels a little fluffy. Um, so it's gonna really pack that on there. Um, you could use this guy, which is a little bit more fluffy, but still kind of dense. Or if you want a really light coverage of it, like if you have dry skin, really light coverage, so this would be a little good one for you. Just the fluffy. Just more fluffy means less coverage, less product. That's it. So we're going to take it. I'm going to dab it in there and then knock that, knock that excess off. And I'm just going to push it. Remember, it's all about pushing the product into your skin so that it doesn't feel like it's sitting on top where it doesn't feel like cake face. I'm gonna get a little bit more. Just what I knocked off, I just got that. And you can see I'm not putting it everywhere. I just put it under my eyes. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more and do my forehead because that's the spot that gets oily for me. Just pushing it in and then I'm gonna grab a little bit more and do my chin just because I touch my chin this is gonna make it to where the foundation does not come off so I don't know if you can see pretty even texture, even color now. We're all one color. <laughs> um, so now that we're all one color, we're going to add some dimension. So let's talk contour. Um, so as I mentioned before, I really like this contour. Um, so contour is cool toned, where bronzer is warm toned. Um, you want your contour to be cool toned because it's creating a shadow on your face. Um, I don't know how to say that it would look weird if it was warm, <laughs> but basically it looks weird if it's warm toned. Um, shadows are cool toned. They just are. That's how life is. Um, so it's just it's gonna look more natural if you do something cool and I'll show you so this is a bronzer you can see maybe how warm this is compared to how cool this is yeah so a lot of bronzers um, especially for us pale girls look orange or red you know and just looks really bad. The one that I found that I really like, and they make a light version of it too, which the light version is really good for like everyday bronzer, is the Hula. Hula Hula um, by Benefit. It is a really good neutral. So it's not cool, it's not warm, it's neutral. So I like using this as my contour, as you can see. <laughs> Almost done with this one. As far as what to apply contour with goes, um, anything that's like a little dome like that, still pretty dense. Um, it's going to be your best bet. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> it's right there in front of me. Um, like this little guy is good because he's a lot more, as you can see, like this is packed more tightly. Than this guy so this is gonna help blend it better whereas this one would be really good for the cream so it's gonna put it there it's not gonna move but it's still gonna blend it so with cream I would blend it with my beauty blender and with cream I would do it before I did my setting powder so we're gonna do hula if you were to, like I would pick one or the other, bronzer or contour, 
bronzer is meant to warm up the face, whereas contour is made to make shadows on your face and make your face a different shape. Or look like a different shape, at least. So, just tap it in there. With, with your cheek contour, you want to actually feel on your face, touch your face, find your cheekbone, because that's what we're going to go underneath. So mine, you can kind of see, cuts in. We're going to start back here, go to here, because you want to go to about the corner, outside corner of your eye. You can make a little fish face if you want. You don't have to. So basically, how I hold my brush is like a pencil. I stamp it where I want it, right? And then I'm gonna stamp the other side too. Oh, top of the ear to the corner of the eye. Right? So you can see this one is a little bit higher than this one, which your face is not symmetrical, so you're going to have to alter it a little bit, obviously. So blending. With contour, unless you're doing the masculine look, which I'll do another video for, you never want to blend down. That's going to make you look like you have a beard, um, five o'clock shadow. <laughs> it's going to make your cheeks look more sunken in. So you always want to blend up and you're going to use circular motions and you're going to blend up to your temple because you have enough product. It's going to go up there. You don't need more. <laughs> We're just blending, blending, blending. The reason I hold my brush this way is for control. If I were to like hold it this way, that's not controlling. If I'm just like letting it all loose in my hand, <laughs> that's not gonna be controlling either. Kind of like how chopsticks. You wanna control where the end of that brush goes. That's kind of dirty. I swear I just washed my brushes too the other day. So now we're gonna blend this one. My arms are real sore from trying to do my hair yesterday. Well, not trying. I succeeded. But from doing my own hair yesterday, they are very sore. Now, I'll show you where, if you were doing bronzer, where you would want to do bronzer here in just a second. So I'm going to grab some more. When you contour, you don't want to just contour one thing. You always want to contour one, uh, two, at least two things. So I always do my forehead because my forehead is large. So we're just gonna tap around my hairline. Get some more. And we're just basically gonna connect the two. And you can see like I'm only only blending it the width of my brush. I'm not bringing it down anymore. And what contour on your forehead does, it just minimizes your forehead. And all these baby hairs want to join the party. So, try to hold this back. So you can see, there's no like harsh line anymore. It's all diffused, it's all blended. It's melding into the contour or the concealer. It's where it's meant to be. Okay. So if you were to do bronzer, I would use a bigger fluffy brush. Dip it in the bronzer. I like the Physicians Formula ones. They're nice about not being like too orange. And basically you would do almost where you put blush. Almost. So you would go, you know, apples of your cheeks, all the way up. Basically, you're just kind of bringing it more because you want your face to be warmer. So it's almost kind of like just a 
all over thing. Could be an all over thing. Because you're not trying to bring attention to cheekbones or whatever. Um, some people contour their nose. I don't. I can show you how. But I found my brush. Um, it was right here. It's shorter than all my, oh, there it is. Shorter than all the others in this jar. Okay, so for your nose, you wanna use a little domed one. You know, like how we use the big dome one here, you wanna use a little one here. Take the same powder. And you wanna start here. Now you can totally get away with just doing this. You don't have to go all the way down. But if you wanted to, you gotta go down. So like the edge of my nose is here, but I'm up on top of it to make it look thinner. You can bring that out a little bit if you want. Some people put a line here to make their nose look more like upturned, like button nose. But I'm good. So that's where you would apply it. And then I'm going to blend it out with this guy. You could use this guy too for your concealer. Um, it's just more dense really the only difference it's not flat so this will blend for you too so um, kind of like the big foundation brush is with a foundation this is with your concealer so you want to blend it down the sides of your nose into your tear duct area And then you can even take your finger and go right over that line. <laughs> so, eh, you know, if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not. No big deal. Just another added step that you can do if you want. So, blush. So one of my favorite things recently has been cream blushes. Um, I really like these by ColourPop. I have, that was a weird way to hold it. I have two, <laughs> these two colors. Um, I think I'll use these today, I'll show you. Um, I find that cream blush has been really nice um, because it's really easy to blend out. So easy, at least these are. I haven't tried, well, no, I haven't really tried any other cream blushes. Um, so I can only speak on these. These are easy to blend out. They're really pigmented. They look natural. Um, I always set it with a powder that's like the same color. Just, you know, it just kind of helps make it last a little bit longer. But really natural. Um, so I'll show you with this one. This one's under pressure. It's kind of like a peachy color. And it matches my hair. So it comes in a stick. And I do one. Oh, you can't really see that on camera. Well, maybe you can. I usually just do like a line and two dots. With blush, you always want to keep it at least a finger or two away from the edge of your nose. The closer to your nose, the older you will look. So I always blend this with my finger and you can see like I'm pushing and kind of swiping up at the same time. If I was, I'll show you with the brush too. Um, you always want your blush to go up, up your cheekbones. 
We're going to blend it into that contour and pull it up. So, I don't know if you can see. It's just really nice and natural looking. And I'm going to grab what I have on my finger and put it on the end of my nose. <laughs> Normally, when humans blush, our noses get red too. So I feel like it just makes sense to put blush on the end of your nose. Plus, it will prevent you from having a, um, as my mom says, a bleakin' beacon. Beacon' bleakin'. <laughs> Bright nose. Because it'll be white, you know, in the middle of all this blush and contour. So, now that I've blended that out, I'm going to grab my blush brush. I'm going to use something like this. Like this guy. Um, or like this one that I showed you earlier for the setting powder. I didn't remember. But I like this one because it's nice and small. Gets in there. I'm going to use... NYX Sweet Cheeks in Daydream. Pretty much the same kind of like peachy tone to it. Just to set it, because whenever you set a cream with powder, it's going to last longer. So I push and then swipe up. And then circular motions are always a good blending idea, blending trick, <laughs> because you'll use it for your eyeshadow too, which I'll do an eyeshadow video too. So, you just want to hit where you normally are going to blush. And you can see that just set it. It's going to last all day. Don't have to worry about it moving anywhere. It's going to be good. So last thing for the face, and it's going to be a little eyeshadow trick too. Um, highlight, which is my favorite thing ever because I like to glow. I like sparkle. Um, so there's several different kinds of highlight, obviously. There's the more natural, more glowy, and there's going to be ones with a little bit of glitter in it. And there's going to be ones with a lot of glitter. <laughs> I like them all. I like, you know, <sighs> sparkling. I like glowing. I, I just, and I use colored um, highlight. I use normal colors. Natural. There we go. Natural colors. Um, my... Probably my favorite one. It was limited edition, so I'm sorry. It's by Tarte. It's called Spellbound Glow. It smells like cake. It smells so good. But it's this guy. Really pretty. Um, it's not glittery. This one's more shimmery. So I'm going to use this fluffy brush. Swirl it in there, tap off the excess. When you do highlight and you want it to look more natural, you're going to start back here, the very top of your cheekbone. You can feel it with your brush. And you're just going to tap it in. And then you're going to go up this way. So you're basically kind of making it like a little C. Because this is where the sun is going to hit you when you go outside. If you want it to look a little less natural, you can bring it into the apples of your cheeks. That's it. So over here. This one is one that I use on all of my photo shoot clients because it looks so pretty on camera. It looks so natural. And then I'm going to put a little bit on my nose, because why not? So for the trick that I was telling you, on days where I don't want to wear eyeshadow, I don't feel like blending, I don't feel like doing all of that, 
I'm gonna put highlight on my eyes. So I'm gonna grab this pearl, pearl shade on a blending brush. I'm gonna put it in the inner corners because that's gonna make my eyes look more open and awake. You can put on however much you want. You glow. You do whatever you want. So, there. And then we're going to highlight right underneath our brow. That's going to make your brows look like they have a little lift to them. And then I finish off with mascara. Maybe some lipstick. Maybe some lip gloss. And that's it. That's going to help you look glowy, awake, like you did something, but without having to do all the eyeshadow blending and picking colors and all that jazz. So, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. <laughs> um, I'm sure if y'all have any questions, you will message me and let me know. Um, if you want to see anything specific, message me, let me know. Um... Sorry this video was kind of long, but we had a lot to talk about. We had like a lot. So, hope you learned something. Hope it was helpful. Hope uh, you enjoyed me like rambling. <laughs> um, I don't think the other videos are going to be quite this long because it'll be like eyeshadow or, you know, masculine look or um, I have a couple planned. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know when the store is going to open, you know, when I'll, I'll be back to work. Um, but this is fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope y'all have fun. See y'all later.